The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today on this 10th day of the month of March, just Thursday, Thursday the 10th, as we continue in word and prayer in the book of Leviticus. Today we'll have chapters 16 and 17, a short devotion after chapter 16, and then chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, and then finally 10 through 16. Let us hear the word of God together and pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord from the 16th chapter of Leviticus, entitled, The Day of Atonement. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they drew near before the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat that is on the ark, so that he may not die. For I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat, but in this way Aaron shall come into the holy place, with a bull from the herd for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and shall have the linen undergarment on his body, and he shall tie the linen sash around his waist, and wear the linen turban. These are the holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water, and then put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the people of Israel two male goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself, and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for Azel. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord, and use it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself, and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall kill the bull as a sin offering for himself, and he shall take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, and two handfuls of sweet incense, beaten small, and he shall bring it inside the veil, and put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is over the testimony, so that he does not die. And he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat on the east side. And in the front of the mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, sprinkling it over the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the people of Israel, and because of their transgressions, all their sins. And so he shall do for the tent of meeting, which dwells with them in the midst of their uncleanliness. No one may be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out and has made atonement for himself and for his house and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. And it shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and consecrate it from the uncleanliness of the people of Israel. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions, all their sins. And he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness. The goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area, and he shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen garments that he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall bathe his body in water in a holy place and put on his garments and come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people 
and the fat of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar. And he who lets the goat go to Azazel shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may come into the camp. And the bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be carried outside the camp. Their skin and their flesh and their dung shall be burned up with fire, and he who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in the water, and afterward he may come into the camp. And it shall be a statute to you forever that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourselves and shall do no work, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For on this day shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean before the Lord from all your sins. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall afflict yourselves. It is a statute forever. And the priest who is anointed and consecrated as priest in his father's place shall make atonement, wearing the holy linen garments. He shall make atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar, and he shall make atonement for the priests and for all the people of the assembly. And this shall be a statute forever for you, that atonement may be made for the people of Israel once in the year because of all their sins. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. So far the word of the Lord. Once a year. Once a year on the 10th day of the seventh month, God impl implemented a mandatory day of atonement. Ritual sacrifices cleanse the sanctuary, cleanse the tent of meeting, altar, priest, and entire congregation of their sins. The chief cleansing agent was blood, which pointed forward to Jesus' sacrifice. By his death, Jesus offered the perfect sacrifice and entered the heavenly sanctuary with his blood, opening the way for believers to enter into God's presence. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Lord, for your abundant mercy. You heard your people's prayers of repentance and sent your precious Son to die for all. By his blood we are made clean and enter into eternal life with you. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, entitled, The Place of Sacrifice. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the people of Israel, and say to them, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. If any one of the house of Israel kills an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or kills it outside the camp, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, to offer it as a gift to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, blood guilt shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. This is to the end that the people of Israel may bring their sacrifices, that they sacrifice in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord, to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and sacrifice them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall throw the blood on the altar of the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and burn the fat for a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat demons after whom they whore. This shall be a statute forever for them throughout their generations. And you shall say to them, Any one of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, to offer it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from his people. So far the word of the Lord. God proclaims his dwelling place as the exclusive place for sacrifices. He does not want his people running after false gods. Today, avoid every association with idolatrous practices. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus alone atones for our sins of adultery, and he does it with his precious blood. By God's grace, he then offers to us eternal life. We pray, O oh Father in heaven, grant us undivided hearts focused on your dear Son, who came to ransom us from our sin, that we might receive the joy of your salvation. In your name we pray. Amen. And lastly for today from the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verses 10 through 16, entitled, Laws Against Eating Blood. 
If any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. Any one also of the people of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who takes in hunting any beast or bird that they may eat, that may be eaten shall pour out its blood and cover it with the earth. For the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. And every person who eats what dies of itself, or what is torn by beast, whether he is a na native or a soldier, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening, then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash them or bathe his flesh, he shall bear his iniquity. So far the word of the Lord. God forbids the wanton killing of birds and animals. He desires that respect be shown for all life. Those who kill wantonly are held accountable for each life. Thanks be to God for the precious life-giving blood of Jesus who has reconciled us to the Father. Let us pray. O oh, Father of all mercy, you provided your ancient people with ordinances that respected life blood as the atonement of sins. By Christ's blood, you redeemed all people. Thank you for your gracious gifts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We continue now in prayer for this 10th day of the month on the Pray For Us calendar and the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Today, Lord, we pray for the Luther Seminary in Seoul, South Korea, that the Lord would preserve those who teach and those who learn, to hold fast to his word in all circumstances. Emboldened by God's promises, let us approach the Lord with petitions of our hearts and our prayers for every manner and condition of man. Almighty God, you have given us the gift of land allowed us to use to our benefit the fruits of the earth and bestowed upon us the privilege of labor and rest. Grant your blessing to our nation, to those who govern us in your name, and to those who defend us against our enemies. Guide us to be a people of peace, to have respect for life from its natural beginning to its natural end, and to be generous with all your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, your mercies are new every morning, and yet we continue to covet what is not ours, and to delight more in things than in you, the giver. Guard us from the love of things, and guide us to love you with all our being, that we may apply our hearts wisely to the time you have given. For the love of neighbor and for the glory of your holy name, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and to sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith, speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>